In the spring of 2011, a group of students and faculty from Virginia Tech embarked on an alternative spring break to Honduras as part of a study tour hosted by Heifer International. Nestled in Central America, Honduras boasts a picturesque landscape and climate that was new to each and every one of us. Our week began in the capital city of Tegucigalpa, where we were introduced to the history of Honduras as well as to Heifer's mission and projects throughout the world. Our group then traveled to rural communities, Trinidad and Cerro Azul, where we were introduced to communities suffering from poverty due to the lack of land ownership, gender inequalities, poor education, as well as deficiencies in healthcare. We interacted with several villages that had evolved from slum housing and hunger to well-constructed villages punctuated with integrated, biodiverse, and vibrant farms that fed the community. The group witnessed Heifer Projects in Action, which validated that Heifer's sustainable community development model unites communities to mitigate hunger and poverty. We also worked side by side with members of a small village, helping them build new homes. Our week concluded in the tourist city of Copan, where we went horseback riding and toured the Mayan ruins. This immersion experience offered students a quality, transformative education opportunity in which they learned through reflective and experiential service learning. This pedagogical approach captured student learning through journaling and photo voice. You are about to hear excerpts from each student's photo voice assignment. As you listen to each student's account, you will learn about each of them, about the people we met in Honduras, the experiences we had, and what we took away from this experience. Through this reflection, it is evident that this experience left us with a new world vision and motivation to enact change within our own community, while also passing the gift of education on to others. Enjoy. Trip, everyone was looking for pictures to take that really captured their experience, and that's kind of um, what we're showing here today. And so, um, they're kind of given enough framework to talk about their photos in. So they're going to describe the photo and then relate it to the civic agriculture and food systems minor um, values and cornerstones and then relate it to the heifer cornerstones, um, which is the um, overarching theme of this trip. And we had created this photo album before we left on the trip to give to Gloria, who is not in this photo, which I actually found really significant. One of the reasons I chose this, I was going through my week's worth of pictures, and in so many of them, Gloria was in between participants that we were working with and us as the kind of mediator and translator, and this was one of the first pictures that I came across at the end that we were actually talking directly to the if you treat an individual as he is, he will stay as he is. But if you treat him as if he were what he ought to be and could be, he will become what he ought to be and could be. Um, and I thought Pepper's mission really um, exempl exemplified that because it helped empower these people. Um, and I know initially we heard a lot of rumors about people calling campesinos lazy and incapable, and this situation just really helped prove that wrong because once these people were given the tools and the education that they needed, they were really able to just completely change their lives and help uplift everybody around them out of poverty. And what I can remember about going there was uh, arriving and just feeling so tired and exhausted from working earlier in the day uh, with those bricks and mortar and just getting there and sitting down in that chair and we were sitting in a circle and just feeling so tired but then um, when um, uh, uh, when she had us all stand up and when she gave that prayer I, I just felt uh, I felt re-energized and I felt so grateful that she was so grateful that we were there and that she was so welcoming. First, this relates to um, 
Pepper's cornerstone of improving the environment. Um, that's like things related to the environment are my field of study, and so I kind of see those things uh, when I when we visited uh, the different projects in Honduras. Um, and uh, in the description of improving the environment, it talks about uh, promoting forestation and then minimizing erosion. Um, so deforestation is cutting, you know, wood, uh, which leads to problems like erosion. Um, so when you have a thing like this that uses less wood, yet it provides the same uh, benefits, first you're reducing how many trees you're using, and that'll prevent problems like erosion. The work of the world is common as mud. Botch it smears the hands and crumbles to dust, but the thing work, do, worth doing well done has a shape that satisfy, satisfies. Clean, evident, Greek anaphoras for wine or oil, healthy bases that held corn are all put in museums, but you know they were meant to be used. The pitcher cries out for water to carry and a person for work that is real. And I think this place and these people would embody the idea of what real work is and um, it made me realize that we have the same work to do here in our own communities and um, it, which is kind of staggering to realize that we're thousands of miles apart and have very different places but essentially our work is the same. Um, granted I will not diminish that the adversity um, that these people face but I think we have the same risk here in not having enough adversity to make us uncomfortable to um, build that fortitude within us to do this really important work. Odo is he is floating through his farm, giving us a tour. I could barely keep up with him. I just kept getting lost in the coffee trees trying to find him. He was so excited. <laughs> so excited and this man had an incredible uh, profound impact on me because I think that if you look at his face and you study his face you can see the pride that's emanating from him and he was I mean, he was just uh, trampling through his crops he was so excited <laughs> we were like don't hurt your crops um, and it, this man his pride was just imminent and that um, had a huge impact Um, but I picked this picture because basically I really liked how we were all together with everybody in the community kind of walking together and moving through the community. It was really it was really fun and I really felt like we were all one big group and not just two separate groups of people coming together. Um, and I love how Caitlin's holding. Annalita's family and community, they're strengthened um, by their ability to create um, a food system which is economically, environmentally, and socially sustainable. Um, she welcomed us into our community and shared with us our, her accomplishments um, and our first-hand look at civic agriculture um, really, I don't know, basically let us see it firsthand and I mean, you can't really compare that to anything else. And the motivation that comes from going through this entire process is really profound. Just visiting the community, we could really see that they had a lot of pride in the product that they were developing. And they were really eager to share with us the whole process. They um, got us some fresh juice and just been squeezed. And we all tried it and it was delicious. And they gave us a gift of this packed sugar that was wrapped in the stems that had already been squeezed out. And we all took pictures with that too. 